All right. Well, uh, uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Caleb Chen, uh, Dean, uh, Gain School of Business. And welcome to the sixth uh, Legion webinar series uh, that we are hosting. And today, uh, we are very uh, uh, excited to have uh, Mr. Kurt Richardson to be in our midst. And uh, as you may know, but, uh, uh, Mr. Richardson uh, is the creator of uh, a wonderful product that's called the uh, Autobox, but this is not the only product that he has created, to my knowledge. And uh, being a serial entrepreneur, and uh, he has engaged in many, many business uh, ventures. And uh, today we have the opportunity to uh, to talk to him and uh, listen to him. And uh, we know that but uh, you are uh, just as anxious to the. Uh, hear from him, to learn from him, as I am. And uh, so, without further ado, we're going to get the ball rolling. And uh, there will be the, some the back and forth of the uh, interview questions. But uh, we also would have the opportunity to the, allow our the, uh, internet audience to the raise questions. And uh, I have already got one from the uh, former students. And uh, I would uh, post that uh, question on his behalf. But, uh, if you have any questions, but the feel free to the send it in to the, the uh, Zoom link, and uh, I should be able to build it on my computer. And uh, if I'm checking my computer, it's not because what well, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I need to be the, doing something else. It's just because what well, I don't want to miss your question. So uh, without uh, uh, further ado, but well, let me the, uh, again uh, welcome the. Thank you. Mr. Richardson, Joe Miss, and uh, appreciate uh, coming. And I uh, know that uh, you flew in yesterday, and uh, there might be a little bit of jet lag. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, you're I'm good. good. Yeah. You're good. Uh, well, uh, let's start off with the question. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself? And uh, I read your bio, and you are a, the, a son of a minister. And, uh, uh, in the hallway, I also heard you say a little bit about the, okay, well, how the important is entrepreneurship even for someone in the ministry. Right. So the, right. you started out uh, being an entrepreneur before you knew that the word exists. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't remember the word growing up, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but yeah, how old I mean, were you when you started your first business? Probably fifth grade. Fifth grade? Yeah, fifth okay. grade. So uh, it started out with, uh, whether it was a garage sale, uh -huh. getting everybody's uh, everybody's things on the block, Sir. putting together a sale. My brother always says it was the first eBay. Exactly. But uh, mm -hmm. taking a cut of everything mm -hmm. I sold, and then we had a shooting range in our garage, uh -huh. so we had uh, uh, charged by the BB. Sir. So Sir. the cost of goods was good because I can mm -hmm. recycle the BBs. So, exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, so it was uh, that. Um, uh, sandbag business in the winter, uh, mm -hmm. always shovel and walk. So there was always a bent to, you know, as a preacher's kid, there's not a lot of money in the house. So uh -huh. you're always looking for ways to be creative and make money. And I think that that, that was a huge influence on me. Sure, well. sure. Yeah. Well, when the, so many other fifth graders are uh, doing other things, if you think about today's world economy, a fifth grader most likely would be. Hmm. Going to school, <laughs> playing soccer, <laughs> and playing soccer, and playing video games, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the last thing that would come through their mind is, well, let's go start a business. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I really viewed it as a business. I viewed it as a way of, even though it was, I okay. viewed it as a way of making uh, making money. Because sure, um, sure. there wasn't, again, like I said, you know, being a preacher's kid, you, mm -hmm. there, there was not... Uh, funds around to do to do things you wanted to do so mm -hmm. you had to get creative to figure out how to make that happen so Sir. part of my part of it was forced by my environment let's say exactly well. mm -hmm. yeah uh, looking back with the say probably the 40 years now mm -hmm. and uh, do you have any regrets that, that you did not spend time doing other things that the most fifth graders would be doing <laughs> No, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and today I would say I, I kind of follow the same pattern, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so. Okay. Well, uh, again, with, the, well, with your uh, father being a minister, and uh, 
uh, how important uh, is it to the uh, to integrate your faith into what you do in the I assume that what the early on in the years what the your parents have ingrained in you okay work ethic is important sure integrity is important especially if you're going into business what the you don't want to the, just make money for the sake of making money sure Can you address that a little bit sure for a, a big part of our thing within otter and other companies is to grow it to give it mm -hmm. so a big part of our uh, nancy and mine philosophy is you know whether it's Otter cares or the richardson foundation one of the two is to give back you know jesus said to whom much is given much is expected uh -huh. and and we very much try to live that out um, mm -hmm. by giving back investing in kingdom things yeah so well, in case uh, our audience uh, 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 is not aware of that but the nancy is because <laughs> it's white yes yes <laughs> they are in the business together in fact what the, while we are doing the webinar what the nancy uh, is what in meeting with the, uh, some of our the, uh, people at the university and also the community and talking about the project hot right. which is a the entrepreneurship program for Youngsters, yeah, fourth te and fifth graders. Philanthropy, yeah, trying to ingrain the, teach those two at a young mm -hmm. age, and instill that. At least get them exposed to that. Sir, sir. Yeah. Well, maybe we can uh, go back to the say one of your the uh, products that uh, you uh, started out in a garage, uh -huh. <laughs> and we can kind of joke about that. What the you still are going to be the in and out you're in and out of a garage <laughs> sure but your garage today is probably the bigger <laughs> than the first garage that uh, where you the uh, had your first prototype sure of the, the what we now call the no as what the other box right can you the, take us back to uh, the early 90s i believe sure when you the had that happen and the how did that idea come by? And uh, I think what the back in those days, what the smart devices, phones were not around. We're not around, right? But you already had right. that in mind. Okay, what the someday people would have their handheld device, and uh, well, lo and behold, they drop it and they lose it. Yeah. But well, you that, that wasn't really where. Give them the insurance, yeah. basically. So the idea came from. Uh, I mean, it 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 was progressive revelation. I would say going into the phones because mm -hmm. the first outer boxes were just that. They were boxes that uh, were waterproof and rugged uh -huh. and could protect anything you put mm -hmm. in the box. Um, some of the PDAs of the day, the handsprings, palm pilots, and That's the right. eye packs fit great in some of our cases. Mm -hmm. The people said, you know, as soon as I open the case, it's exposed to the environment and can be ruined. So I came up with a way to interact mm -hmm. with the with with the uh, uh, device through the box with uh, membranes, and uh, we 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 patented that. So today Otter has around 300 patents, wow. and uh, mm -hmm. probably another 200 or so applied for. Um, but um, that was really how we started to get into electronics. From there, I went to, uh, we had a whole line of PDA cases for mm -hmm. different PDAs and different attachments that attach to the PDA, as well as some tablets. So we, uh, we, we took care of different tablets also with cases mm -hmm. that allowed you to interact with the device and protect it in a harsh environment. So that's where, um, and then along came the Blackberry, mm -hmm. and eventually the iPhone, the iPod, you know, all, but all of those we developed products for that were interactive and rugged cases. So that's that, that's really kind of how Otter evolved from just a, a solid case box uh -huh. to interactive cases or sure. protection sure. for electronics. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, it started out as a concept and uh, you felt the need. Well, yeah, okay. you, mm -hmm. you sensed what the customer wanted mm -hmm. and because you were trying to listen to what the customer was asking for at trade shows and various other online or Sure, sure. Yeah. If I the, remember correctly, the, from reading your bio, uh, you ran the company, other products for about 15 years, uh -huh. and then you step away. Right. 
being a true serial entrepreneur, <laughs> you're not going to be the uh, staying with one business for the for a long, long time without feeling bored. <laughs> right. So that what did you do after the uh, running this company and growing this company? Yeah. Um, so the well from basically with a, a local company to being an international company. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Otter really became international under my watch. So mm -hmm. we, we have offices in Hong Kong, and sure. we have offices in, in Ireland. Um, so we have about a thousand employees globally, uh, 800 of which I would say are in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but at some point, you know, as an entrepreneur early on, you're doing everything within the company. Exactly. Your yeah. job then becomes more siloed mm -hmm. as the company gets bigger. You know, once you're up to 500, 600 people, you're pretty much, you know, every a lot of people have those jobs that you used sure, to do. Sure. And you become bored as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So you're, it was time for me, I knew it was time for me to go start some new things mm -hmm. and put more of an operational person in charge. Mm -hmm. So. Um, th there was a there was a time when th that was handed over and mm -hmm. and so uh, it's been it, it, I'm still involved at Otter so. from a chairman standpoint mm -hmm. but other than that um, I, I visit with the CEO probably every week um, beyond that you know we've got great people in place a bunch of great otters running the so, company yeah. all over the world yeah. mm -hmm. well let's get into the little bit of uh, your head and also your heart what the what uh, do you like most about being an entrepreneur? Yeah, the, again, what this word did not exist <laughs> when you were a fifth grader. Yeah. So that there's got to be something about this activity uh, that uh, keeps driving you to do yeah. what you do today. Well, I, I think you know a lot of people. Uh, I would say that's who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, that's who I've always been. So I haven't known any different. So. Even when the word came around, I was like, "Well, I guess that's what I am." Mm -hmm. So, uh, but but uh, I think when you when you are an entrepreneur, I think everybody has entrepreneurial traits. Mm -hmm. But an entrepreneur is probably a personality, a kind of a DNA thing. So, mm -hmm. it's a, a real full blown entrepreneur is probably going to be that from almost the day they popped out. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's who they are. That's who yeah. their personality is. That's that's who they are. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, not that people shouldn't learn about entrepreneurialism, because one day they may be like my CEO, who's not an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. he's an operational CEO, but he still has to work for an entrepreneur, so he's got to... he has a, to be the entrepreneurial. Right, yeah. in his thinking, mm -hmm. and, his and wants to install that in all the departments throughout the company. You want that entrepreneurial, that creative thinking, how do we do this better? You know, mm -hmm. progressive, you know, uh, changes. How do we how do we get better all the time? Yeah. And be creative about that. Mm -hmm. Thinking outside the box. Yeah. You know, 3M. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you the, look at 3M as a the, uh, well, world-class model uh, for entrepreneurship, innovation, and uh, maybe the encourages your the you staff to look at the clock? See what 3M is able to do. Right. The class example is the, the sticky notes. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. It was a failure. Oh, oh it does not glue. <laughs> it does not the, the, do what it was meant to do. But when you turn it around, okay, well, the, guess what? It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. It's post it notes that the, they got the patent and the, still is used by so many people today. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you started the, uh, you found the Blue Ocean the Enterprises and also the Blue Ocean Holdings. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, give us a little bit of insight about uh, what these companies sure. uh, or entities what the, uh, does? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Blue Ocean Holdings is, is based more around our real estate purchases. So Blue Ocean itself came out of auto, a need which was basically a family office. Uh -huh. You know, you're, you're growing a company, you're, you're gaining this wealth. How do you invest it? How do you, how do you take care of it right? You know, when you look at estate planning and things uh -huh. like that. So it started out as our family office. So we have Blue Ocean Holdings, which 
uh, takes care of a lot of our real estate side. Mm -hmm. And then Blue Ocean Enterprises is, is very geared around small business and businesses that we either invest in or have come alongside or so, wholly own. So, mm -hmm. um, so we have businesses, whether they're in Denmark, making mm -hmm. wooden pellets, or whether they're in Fort Collins uh, Distillery, or whether they're making body armor mm -hmm. um, for the military, or whether they're uh, uh, a, uh, um, resorts in the British Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. So there's a wide variety of businesses, or whether it's an online business we've invested in that, that does builds websites. Sure. So it, a wide variety of, of uh, products and services that we've invested in, or, mm -hmm. or even businesses that we just try to encourage small business through an sure. incubator mm -hmm. that we've invested in there in Fort Collins. So we, mm -hmm. Uh, called Galvanized, and uh, they're also in Denver, Boulder, San Francisco, New York. Really an amazing uh, entrepreneurial incubator. Sure, sure. And, uh, so looking for things like that where we're able to invest and encourage entrepreneurialism, but also train and equip. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of entrepreneurs out there are not trained and equipped to run a small business. That's right. Mm -hmm. So giving them those what I call blocking and tackling aids to help them be successful. Some of the ones we invest in with Blue Ocean, we provide the legal and accounting and some of the, so the back office kind of things so that they can focus on their business when they're small, give them that support, at the same time educate them in how to run a small business. So to some extent, uh, you are uh, running what I would call an entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurship uh, institute. <laughs> yeah, in by some, providing hands-on experience. Sure, you know. sure. In some ways, that mentorship uh -huh. as well from different people within Blue Ocean. Yeah. Whether it's legal or accounting or, or just uh, leadership. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. yeah. um, well. You the cap touched on a little bit uh, earlier when uh, we mentioned your wife, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nancy, and uh, what uh, they're doing in the other meeting room. Sure. <laughs> that, uh, well, there's a program called the Project Hot, right? That uh, uh, seeks to instill in the young minds and hearts well, the importance of entrepreneurship sure. and also the giving back, right? Can you uh, talk about this? A sure. Bit? Yeah, well, let, let, me, yeah. let me back up a little bit. I'll talk sure. about Otter Cares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Otter Cares came out of Otterbox. Mm -hmm. um, it's the giving charitable arm of Otterbox. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to be able to get our otters to understand about to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. And so we created uh, Otter Cares. And the way we launched Otter Cares is we did what we call a get it, grow it, and give it. Mm -hmm. We call it our G3. Yeah. So what we did is we gave everybody in the company $200 and we said, we want you over the next three weeks to go grow this and then we want you to give it to the nonprofit of your choice here in our town. So what that allowed us to do was to really get people involved in giving back. But the beauty of what we saw was the whole... Grow it, pot. Well, the more... You, it means more to give than to receive. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people had never experienced that in their lives. So suddenly they're involved in growing something to give back to something. But what I saw was a change in people's hearts, not their heads. Sir. You, you saw people that had never been given back before suddenly go, wow, this feels really good. Yeah. I've never experienced this. I really... I want to do more of this. I want to give back more. I want to be involved in nonprofits. So today we give everybody uh, a whole week. We pay week of paid time off uh -huh. to where they can go and work in a nonprofit. And we pay it's them not just money, them. it's time. Yeah, it's yeah. time. Yeah. It's getting them back. involved in yeah. that. And we still do our G3 and we still do other programs during the year through Otter Cares and Blue Ocean uh -huh. where we're able to continually give back to our community. Our community has given us so much, we really feel that we, we want to be a good steward mm -hmm. of what we've been given. Yeah. Well, the, if someone's working for you, uh, what uh, do you think what is the reason why they stay uh, loyal to the company? And, uh, well, 
if you look at other industries, what the what employee turnover sure. is a big uh, concern. Well, culture is a big deal within your business. I think, uh, and I think I truly believe the culture is the responsibility of the CEO because I think it comes down from the top. You set the tone. You yeah. set the tone. The core values of the company mm -hmm. are very important early on. First of all, the vision. Mm -hmm. Where's the vision? How do the core values align with the vision? And then how do you communicate that to everybody within the business sure. so everybody is on the same page? Mm -hmm. We have a number of systems we use to do that with. One of them is our strategic operating plan, which is very fluid. I mean, a lot of people mm -hmm. talk about a business plan. We, we never deal with business plans. We deal with uh, a, a, an op, what we call our strat op process. Mm -hmm. And it was invented by a guy named Tom Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and we use that in every part of Otter. So we have a strategic plan, operating plan, for the whole business, and then we have that for every department. Even even key accounts have their own strategic plan, but they all align with our core values, mm -hmm. and they align to our vision. So everybody and everything is working in the same direction. Sir, everybody has a plan on a page that's right there at their desk for where for their department, mm -hmm. and and then one for the whole company. Yeah. Do you have any the stock options for your employees or the uh, Profit sharing you know, planes. We mm -hmm. do have profit sharing. We're not a publicly held company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, toyed with that, mm -hmm. but it's that's it's got it's a whole other set of issues. Sure. Sure. So um, we're we're privately held, but we've mm -hmm. always had profit sharing. Yeah. So one time we we had a profit uh, profit sharing system called our bucket system, mm -hmm. which we took from uh, Jack Stack, great game of business. I don't know if you've ever read mm -hmm. that book, but. Uh, um, but we, we, we said, okay, every $300,000 in profit, we're going to take 10% of that, we're going to put it in a bucket, and when that bucket fills up, it's going to spill to everybody in the company, and that will be based on their, uh, their percentage of payroll within the company is how much they'll get. So, and that worked for quite a few years. We've mm -hmm. since, just in the last year, changed that to be, uh, it's probably a little more complicated now, but it's it's personal and then it's also very corporate tied to the whole thing so mm -hmm. um, but we do have profit sharing I've always had profit sharing and at times at one time uh, it was 30 to 40 percent of their their income Wow so it's been mm -hmm. it, it goes quite high it can go quite high mm -hmm. that's very innovative yeah mm -hmm. well we've tried to be you know I, I, I always go well these are people go, well, you came up with such great ideas. Well, they're not all my ideas. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not. So I got them from reading and being mm -hmm. educated. If you went into my office today, it looks very much like a library. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, a voracious reader as mm -hmm. far as business books. I mean, my idea of a vacation was sitting on the beach mm -hmm. reading seven books, you okay. know. Mm -hmm. So, and then taking those ideas and then integrating them into a system. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things I always, and this isn't mine, this comes from from Michael Gerber's E-Myth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's systems run the business, but people run the systems. So it's creating, yes, cre creating the right systems for the business, but at the same time, there's a balance there. You don't want to create so many systems that you create bureaucracy. And uh, that's, that's, that, that's easy to do. I think Otter over the years has kind of swung more towards bureaucracy uh -huh, yeah. because it's so big and when you become a bigger organization but now we're trying to get cut out the bureaucracy and be more streamlined and quick. I mean we're quick in some areas but there's some areas that it's just I feel like we're running through mud at times you sure, know, because sure. of our systems mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. but yeah. but at the same time without those you have chaos yeah. which can be just yeah. as detrimental. There's always the, uh, the challenge of uh, trying to grow your company but also the not to grow it too much, yeah. and then you well, have to do, come up draw the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what do you what do you do when you're like Otterbox and you grow at well over a hundred percent for seven eight years? Um, and we we had that challenge, and for that challenge we had to have our strategic planning process. So sure. if we didn't have that, we would have imploded. Uh -huh. because of the lack of systems and the lack of clarity uh -huh. on what was the most important thing to be working on. Yeah. And so if you're not if you're not always focusing on the most important thing, then uh, you, you you know 
know, then that's where a business plan really falls down. Mm -hmm. You know, most business plans get written. They're great to go get a loan and they put on the shelf. It on the shelf. But uh, so we, we quit that a long time ago mm -hmm. and went to a strategic planning process, which is a is a living document that everybody exactly. works by, mm -hmm. continually is renewed as clarity is needed. And, but it's a system, mm -hmm. so we have a system for that that process. Yeah. Well, in the spiritual the uh, realm, well, we use the what retreats. <laughs> Yeah. Every so often, Paul, well, you have to the, do a retreat <laughs> so that you can uh, well, uh, leave things behind and uh, be refreshed, recharged, rejuvenated. And it uh, looks like well, you do that too, as uh, author and uh, as yeah. a, the chairman, um, top executive. And, uh, but uh, uh, what is it like uh, for maybe an average employee? You mentioned about the they have one week off, <laughs> right. doing things that they are passionate about, and right. uh, uh, there's no restriction about which organization no, that they right, want right. to be it's, involved it's in. It's what they, what, yeah. where they want to get back. If they want to go uh, overseas, it's certainly going to be oh, yeah. fine too. And we've had we've had some go overseas and never come back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we, it's not you know, the intent we, outcome. It's yeah. not the intent, yeah. but you know what? That's okay, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it really is about the person, isn't it? Sure, it's about sure. people. Business is people, yeah. um, and uh, it's it's. We want our otters to do what they want to do, and after a year, mm -hmm. they've been at otter for a year. We give them a life plan, where they can go through a process. It's a two-day process where they they go through there and they really figure out what do they really want, and uh, and it's it's just it's a gift. But what we want them. We want them doing what they really want to do because that's what they're going to do best. Mm -hmm. And if it's being a missionary, if it's you know working for uh, a different organization, doing something totally different, then that's what we want for them as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think when you do that, you set up a very freeing culture. Sir. And so that's that's a big another mm -hmm. thing that we offer at Otterbox and Blue mm -hmm. Ocean is a is a life plan after they've been there a year. Huh. Wow, uh, a couple of things that I picked up. Uh, uh, one is what you call your employee's office. <laughs> Otters, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, wow, well, tell us the story behind the uh, other box. And uh, why did you or Nancy uh, pick that name? And uh, sure. it has become the DNA of the, the company, sure. obviously. And uh, so that's number one. Number two is what the Let's go back to the core values. Uh -huh. about that. The core values are the important things that define the company. And uh, what are some of the core values that uh, well, you can identify and uh, every employee knows about the at others, uh, other products, but uh, uh, this is why we uh, continue to exist and excel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, the name, mm -hmm. I'll go back to the name, uh, the name, when we originally started making products, the Otter Box, uh, we're, we came up with the water type box and we wanted to come up with a name while our biggest competition was Pelican. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted something that was a, a name of, a, a, of something around the water that was sure. fun. And what's more fun in the water than an otter? Mm -hmm. So that's where Otter Box came from. And Nancy came up with that yeah. name. Yeah. I can remember driving to Denver when that happened. But uh, so it's so you it, have to give her the credit. I have to give her the credit. <laughs> but so, you take the cash. <laughs> take, yeah, there you go. But uh, she gets that too. Okay. <laughs> but it, you know, at the end of the day, it really uh, it, it's become really like you said, part of our DNA as far as otterisms. So we yeah. uh, we talk about otteritude. Mm -hmm. We talk about the otter way. We call our, our all the employees are otters. So yeah, yeah. it really is uh, a big part of our culture. And you the walk around. When you, yeah, when you walk around Otter, we you see uh, um, post pictures of otters everywhere. You see carvings of otters. You see. So we really, it, it is a big deal for us. And we have a slide that goes from the second floor to the first floor, and there's sculpted otters all along the slide. Uh -huh. So again, trying to really, um, it's really part of of our business and, and who we are. Sure, so sure. it's been a great. Uh, a great p 
piece of our culture. Mm -hmm. so, so, so being innovative, uh, listening to your customers, uh, giving back is a big part. Integrity. Integrity. Treating and others would, as yeah. you'd want to be treated. The golden rule. All core values. The golden mm -hmm. rule is yeah. a, it's a huge deal at Audit. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. uh, we really and that I mean that goes to our customers. That goes mm -hmm. to employees. That goes to personal relationships with each other. Yeah. I mean, as Jesus said, do to one others as you want to have yeah. done to you. Mm -hmm. And that's very much what we try to live by. Do we mess up sometimes? Mm -hmm. Sure we do, but that's where forgiveness comes into sure. play, isn't it? Sure. Well, I can't picture in my head what the you apply the same core values when you first started your business as a fifth grader. And you might not have thought about that way. Yeah. But well, huh, I treated my customers the same way that I want to be treated. I want to be fair to them and I want to be fair to my employees, those whom you they ask to come along and help. <laughs> And the same set of principles, right? Whether it's a small business or a big business. Yeah, and I think your core values as a, as a business. Now, I think there's a lot of businesses that really uh, never set their core values. They mm -hmm. never really talk about that. I mean, a lot of people do mission statements and yeah. mm -hmm. things like that. But uh, it has to align with a vision. You know, uh, where there's no vision, there's death. You know, mm -hmm. so and that is very true for a company as well. So. To me, it's key that the leadership, the leader, sets the vision. Mm -hmm. You come together, the core values are definitely going to come from the leader as well. And then, you know, how are you, how are you making sure that um, those are lived out within your organization, within your culture of your organization? Culture is a whole other subject and, and a very important one within an organization. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Spring Arbor then has a concept that says what the, we are a community of learners that focuses on lifelong learning uh, of the liberal arts and application of that. Uh, would you consider yourself a lifelong learner? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, yeah. By, I by, by necessity. Yeah. <laughs> by necessity. <laughs> well, the mere fact about that you, the, you read books to the, to find out what the, how you can do things better and you talk about the, well, you read books so that you can uh, maybe the identify a better system mm -hmm. so that I think what you are a lifelong learner. A different way of world. looking at it, mm -hmm. a different uh, way of enhancing. You know, life is really progressive revelation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not yeah. like we have a vision right up front. Things happen. Does the vision change a lot? No. Does it change? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so whether it's for your personal life or for your business, mm -hmm. you know, things happen that, yeah. that give you different perspective, give you different clarity on where you're going and what you're doing and what uh -huh. really is the most uh -huh. important thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, piggybacking on the question of uh, being a lifelong learner, what the, over the years, what the, uh, you must have learned many, many lessons on leadership and entrepreneurship. Uh, can we talk about the maybe three or four important lessons that you want to share with our audience today? Sure. I, I think as a leader, um, it's really important for the first thing for the leader to figure out is what does the leader really want? You know, I think a lot of us go into small business and, and even life and we never um, ask ourselves that question, what do I want? I mean, it, wouldn't it be a shame to get to your on um, your last breath in life and go? I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? What happened? What I mean, what happened to that whole thing? Was it was it a life worth living? Mm. And I think until we really understand what we want, I mean, Jesus didn't walk by those two blind guys and ask them, "What do you want?" He knew what they wanted, mm -hmm. but he wanted them to say it. Sir. Sure. Mm. And I think. Life is very much the same way for us. We need to understand what we really want. And I'm not talking about things. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about what do we want deep down in our hearts? Mm -hmm. Who are we? And how do we want to make a difference? And uh, and uh, whether it's for the kingdom or whether it's for whatever, mm -hmm. you know, most people never ask themselves or give themselves permission to ask that question. Uh -huh. And I think as a leader, it's important to understand 
Uh, what do you really want? Um, before you go to vision, before you go to um, core values, because it's pretty empty if you're mm -hmm. if you're if you're just going through the motions, sir, sir. and it doesn't align with what who you really are. So for me, that was a big uh, aha, mm -hmm. and I wish I'd have been confronted with that question when I was 25 rather than when I was 43. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it would have given given me more clarity on where I was headed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So will you advise for the um, young people today, your employees, our students here, for the to sit down and really for the ask this? Yeah, I mean, I, after, I think the place to start is what don't I want? Mm -hmm. What don't you can eliminate a lot of things if you ask yourself what don't I want? Yeah. To try to get to what I do, do I really want? Maybe write your eulogy. Mm -hmm. Not a bad thing to do. You know, what yeah. would, what would my son or daughter say about me at my funeral? Yeah. You know, and and what would I want them to say about me at my funeral? <laughs> Am I going to live that life out mm -hmm. to to where um, I'm remembered for what I want to be remembered for? Sir, sir. So, I, I think it's a great way to really get at the core of things mm -hmm. and then get in touch with with what who we really are and what we're meant to be, you know. And yeah. So, and what if God's put If you allow me to, the, to build on that for the, uh, what do you want to be known for? Uh, say, um, we all die someday. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, after you die, what, the, what do you want people to the, remember you from? Well, I, I really want to be remembered as a person that came alongside other people and helped them understand their gifts and helped give them tools to really be the best they were created to be. So for me, that's, that's really what I would call part of my primary aim in life is to help others understand why they were created and who they are and what the mm -hmm. desires of their hearts are and help them live those out in, in a way that is uh, mm -hmm. what it was meant to be. And I don't see any difference about that between what you say uh, and what might be a pastor, say your father, right. say right. his life's goal is to help people realize their dreams yeah. and uh, that God created them for a purpose. Why well, aren't we all really yeah. meant to be ministers? Mm -hmm. I mean, minister to each other that's right. and, and help each other. I mean, that's really mm -hmm. what what life's about. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Uh, I want to encourage out the uh, uh, internet audience. But the, if you have any questions, but the people the same, them and uh, I would be able to the refer to them. I have a couple more questions uh, to the wrap things up and uh, also the I want to be sensitive to the. Your time commitment, and uh, we also have other things to that uh, we have lined up. Uh, there's a luncheon <laughs> coming up. Uh, we don't want to be the missing that, obviously. And uh, well, um, a lot of people look at the say success being, but then uh, how much worldly uh, goods, material uh, stuff that you right. uh, are right. able to uh, accumulate. <laughs> Um, I think that you have a different uh, philosophy, the perspective, yeah, yeah. and uh, well, giving back is a big one. Right. Uh, even it means that about the well, I allow my employee to do this. Using the example of what the well, your employee that went on a say uh, mission trip, <laughs> right, and decided not to come back, and it's okay because what the he is doing what the he felt called to do. And uh, is more important than what the he or she to find fulfillment in life right. than the finding the uh, riches or wealth that might uh, make the person feel miserable. Right. Have you encountered anybody who's rich and miserable? <laughs> well, I think there's there's we see a lot of that in uh -huh. our world today. Um, you know, I think. For me, it's like, and we talk about this at Otter, it's do the right thing, uh -huh. and the right thing will happen. Hmm. Now, that's going to be different for everybody, 
and uh, really is, isn't the, a big part of the exercise is understanding what is the right thing, whether that's in business or in your life. Um, understanding what that is, and then it's the faith of trusting that the right things are going to happen because you're, you're doing the right things. Now, those are going to be different for everybody, but certainly I would say, you know, the Bible has some pretty... God's laws are pretty concrete and very concrete and you know you violate those laws and there's consequences to that so um, understanding you know what's the right thing for you to do and what's the right thing in business what's the right thing in life um, I think we're, we're, that's a constant continual learning is so, so, yeah. so. you may recall that the, the Bible has a lot to say about that what's the right thing to do uh -huh. yeah. And then what the, the individual also has, uh, well, is between the, the individual and God, what the, what the God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things are very clear. You mm -hmm. don't have to go anywhere but the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's clear. Right. But uh, uh, I know a lot of young people that uh, would often ask what the, I really don't know that what God's will is for me. And uh, what would be your advice to them? Today. Well, I mean, find a find, keep asking, mm -hmm. keep learning. Um, you know, for me, I, I was always looking for that system or that that process that would help me uh, understand that. Do I have full clarity on that? No, I, I don't know if I ever will have full clarity on it. But I certainly have more clarity than I had when I was forty. You know, so I, I mean, it's a, it's an amazing. I think if you're asking that question, and you're seeking that, both in prayer and in life, you're gonna find what you're looking for. You're gonna get going in the right direction. So, as a young person, you know, I, I always say, at 18, it's amazing they know everything. Mm -hmm. I knew everything at 18. I hit 21, I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. You know, because I started to experience life, and it's like, wow. This is this is a whole lot different than. Is another aha moment. Yeah, <laughs> big aha moment. Mm -hmm. Can we speak a little bit about that? Say the um, integration of faith and uh, business. Sure. And, uh, it seems that what the the culture that you try to create for the author is very consistent with the, what maybe a pastor would want to see happen uh, in. His congregation, sure. And uh, uh, if I'm an employee of uh, your company, and I go to say the church right here, and uh, uh, one thing I would uh, keep telling my pastor that what the my the my workplace is my mission field, uh -huh. and uh, uh, I'm not saying that what my pastor would disagree. It's just what the uh, what else. Do you think I should uh, tell him to convince him that what the uh, I'm doing the right thing? And uh, sometimes there's a the um, a dichotomy. Okay, if you're not in ministry, you're not in ministry. Right? Right. <laughs> Even though well, we just work while well, we minister to others. Yeah, I think your the, ministry really is your work. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, do people see you as different? Mm -hmm. do, I, I mean. It's, it's easy to set yourself apart in the workplace yeah. with uh, hard work, honesty, integrity. I mean, because uh, there's a shortage of that. Sure. And uh, when people see that, I mean, that's, uh, I, 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 I'm, as a business, I've never been a believer of, of preaching the gospel in my business. I want my life to reflect Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I want people to be able to go, What's different? Yeah. When somebody's having a tough time, they can come to me and go, mm. "How do you do it? Well, what? Why? Why is Otter so different? I know there's something different here. What is it? Yeah. That's when I have the opportunity to share. In Jesus, the skin on. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not. I'm not going to get up there at a company meeting. Now, will I? Will I talk about Jesus' core values and biblical values? Absolutely. Those are ingrained in every part of Otter, and ingrained in who I am. So that's going to come out. Yeah. So to me, that's uh, that's that's where I'm going to preach the gospel is is in the works mm -hmm. of my hands and my yeah. ideas mm -hmm. and my 
and you know they're gonna. That's where it's gonna come. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't forget about that. There's a question that, uh, that uh, if someone is going to the uh, consider starting a small business someday, would it be the wise to the volunteer in the local community so that you can uh, understand, get a feel of what's needed in the community? So that person is primarily thinking about. Uh, if I live in Jackson, well, I need to know what uh, Jackson needs and uh, sure. is uh, volunteering a good way to do that or are there some other uh, better ways? And I think what the, there's a little bit of motivation of what am I volunteering so that what I the, would gain from that eventually so that I can start a business what that for. Yeah. Fit the, the, the need. Well, I'm not sure volunteering in a nonprofit is going to give you ideas how to start a business. Not that things couldn't come out of that, mm-hmm. but I think uh, probably you're looking for a void. Yeah. A lot of times, a void within your marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it is is learning to hear what's not being said. Sir. Sure. Is 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 key, and uh, there there's, there's certainly ways to do that and books yeah. are written about that mm-hmm. so I think the best thing you could do really is start reading about small business I would suggest read E-Myth by Michael Gerber mm-hmm. that's a great book to start with um, gives you some good good uh, uh, background on starting a business and what that so how, how that could or could not might not fit yeah. you mm-hmm. um, so understand what you're getting into just go, I want to start a business and, and blindly think it's going to mm-hmm. give you more time off because it's not. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what it could cost you could be everything so if you do it wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to uh, understand what you think you want. Yeah. Because yeah. it may not be what you think it is. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're down to just a few more minutes and uh, I'd like to just add a couple more questions. and. Uh, well, you know, Mrs. is also the Mr. The Harry Hosmer, and uh, he and his wife are the endowed uh, the Hosmer Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And I wonder if uh, Harry, you have questions to uh, ask? You don't. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> well, then uh, let me uh, just uh, offer this uh, maybe uh, two questions. What the uh, one? Uh, well, you said that you uh, you read a lot of books, uh-huh. and uh, well. The e book is obvious one, but uh, what are some other books that you are reading lately? Um, you know, when, you, when it comes to vision, one thing I never knew was, was how do you create a vision? Uh, Michael Deaton's book called Mind Management uh-huh. was a very good uh, book for me, as well as he has got a great DVD called, uh, not DVD, I'm sorry, CD, uh-huh. um, called Visioneering, which was very helpful in if you have a vision, how do you get everybody else to understand the vision and buy into the vision? So um, th- that was another key book for me. Another thing a lot of us entrepreneurs have trouble with is time management. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so Getting Things Done is another great book. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that, that really helps you uh, with your time management and, and system, building a system around information how do you handle it there's so much today how do you deal with it yeah so those are a couple getting of things ones. done and not to be the uh, bird cow right mm-hmm. Jim Collins has so, some great books yeah. you know uh, mm-hmm. the whole philosophy of getting the right mm-hmm. people on the bus in the right seats at exactly. the right time yeah. we actually it's, used it for the uh, MBA class yeah, yeah. so key that, and that, that's a great book I mean so there's lots of uh, Big helpful things out there. The uh, great website to go to is the Patterson Center. Uh-huh. dot com, yep. which uh, talks about Stratop, that Stratop process we use, as well as life planning. Um, but that's a uh, that's that's a great site and a great process to look at within your business, as far as strategically planning and operating your business. Great, so, great. This is a great ideas and. Uh, well, uh, we'll definitely follow up on the, some of these books, and I know that uh, Jim Collins what, is also from the Colorado. <laughs> yes, yeah, Boulder. Yeah, yeah. Right in fact, what, uh, my, the, uh, one of my former deans what, uh, went out there to interview him, uh-huh. and um, 
we could invite him to come. Yeah, he was a uh, uh, his schedule wouldn't allow him to come. Yeah, he's pretty busy. But uh, uh, Rick Wallace, with the flew out there and the in the built in, and the, we uh, we still uh, used the, the recording uh, mm -hmm. for classes. Yeah, from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Good. Well, we're down to the last minute or so, and. Uh, do you have any parting thoughts that you wanted to uh, share with our audience? No, I, I think it just goes back to I would really encourage you before you dive into business. You may already be into business, and I was into business when I when I really confronted myself with that question: What do I really want? Because it's it's kind of that for me. It's that rod and staff that I hold up when major decisions come along, and I have to decide: Is this the right direction for me to go? Does it align with what I really want? And uh, and, and and that's not an easy question to um, to uh, ask yourself or to come up with the answer with. It takes a lot of time. I know for me, it took probably a month to really diving into it. And I had a I had a business coach at the time that really challenged my thinking, and that was uh, that was instrumental for me was to really understand what I wanted and how that would build the culture and the vision for Autobox today as well sure. as other blue ocean companies. Mm -hmm. So great. Well Kurt, thank you for your you bet. generosity of time you and uh, sharing with us your wisdom. And uh, we hope that uh, we don't just but uh, listen uh, but uh, turn this advice into action plans. And this would be the biggest but the uh, return on the investment that uh, Mr. Richardson has made today uh, by the appearing in our the, uh, leadership webinar series. Uh, until next time, well, uh, God bless.